What is going on, fellas and lady fellas? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we got some more journey code stuff. We got a bunch of stuff last night. We got five new Senka cards that I already put a video up on a little bit earlier than this one, if you want to see uh, me going over the effects of those. But we also got a pretty much a new archetype developed here. Uh, it's kind of like the Thunder Dragon treatment, the Samorg treatment. We had one card before, Deep Sea Diva, and they're pretty much just going to base a whole archetype around it. It seems we have a Deep Sea archetype here, um, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, you'll see what they do, but they definitely don't not synergize with mermails. So we'll definitely be, be touching a little bit on that as well. But I don't want to waste too much time. Let's just jump right into it. We've got Deep Sea Artisan starting us off here. He's a level one water sea serpent effect monster with a zero effect, attack and 500 defense. So stats very poo, but he's level one, so whatever. His effects are both once per turn each. First effect, if this card is added to the hand from the deck or graveyard, you can reveal this card and look at your opponent's hand. Busted. Second effect, if this card is special summoned, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, and then target a level four lower monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but its effects are negated. A level four or lower water monster, huh? Um, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm guessing there are going to be multiple ways you can special summon this from the deck. Uh, hopefully from hand as well, so that way you would be able to add it Look at your opponent's hand, see what hand traps or what they're playing that you need to either set up a board accordingly or dodge certain hand traps, bait certain stuff, whatever you got to do. And then um, be able to maybe special summon it from hand to also mill a card and special the water monster back from grave. Hopefully that's not too much to ask for. But um, this card seems really strong if the stuff around it can be uh, strong as well. Next up, we're looking at Deep Sea Sentry. He's a level 2 water sea serpent effect monster with 400 attack and 2,000 defense. So actually a legit stat here, 2,000 booty. Both of his effects are also once per turn each. If this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, you can banish one card from your opponent's hand face up until the end phase. Now that's a very interesting effect. You banish a, a card from their hand face up until the end phase. Um, stuff that's interesting is like going first, this would give you some insight on what your opponent is playing potentially. You know, rip the right card, you see what they're playing, then you know which what type of board will be the best against that kind of deck. You know what I mean? Like if this deck has capabilities of making rank fours and like Dweller, maybe you rip a card and you see it's True Draco. So you're like, I don't, why do I want Dweller against True Draco? Like, or you know what I mean? Just like stuff like that. Like you want just the best card. You'd rather make a, a Tornado Drag versus Draco instead. You know what I mean? Something like that. Um, pretty nice there though but it, it banishes to the end phase they don't actually lose the resource permanently second effect if this card is special summoned you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard then target one level four lower water in your graveyard and add it to your hand okay so just nice recursion i mean honestly you get to mill two and recur a card you could i mean yeah it's good <laughs> it's just good also keep in mind uh, we don't know, but if the possibility for sending this card to the graveyard to activate a water monster effect on your opponent's turn is possible, then you're just going to be omegating your opponent, really. Like, right? You're just going to be banishing um, one card from your opponent's hand. This does not say whether it's random or your opponent gets to choose, which is interesting. Um, so we don't know if we get to, like, look and banish or if it's random or if our opponent gets to choose. Interesting. But um, definitely the possibility for this is on the table. Any quick effect that can send this to the graveyard to activate an effect is going to make that live. Thirdly, we've got Deep Sea Minstrel. This is a level 3 water sea serpent tuner effect monster with 1200 attack and 1500 defense. You can only use this card's first and second uh, effect one per turn each. You can discard this card in one water monster. Hey, what do you say? Works with this guy pretty good, huh? <laughs> to reveal your opponent's hand, and if you do, Banish one card from their, uh, from their face up until the end phase. So this is even better because this, can, like this one definitely gets to look, and then does this one randomly banish? So like you get to look and banish one targeted card that you want on your opponent's hand, and then you get to, that's pretty good. And this is discarding this card and this guy to the graveyard. So you wouldn't even be like, um. You wouldn't be searching anything. You wouldn't be adding anything yet. You would just start with this, rip an ash or whatever hand trap, and then possibly, and then just rip another card. 
uh, on your, and then you might be able to just go about your business from there, which is really, really good, really, really strong, and it gets you to look at your opponent's whole hand. Second effect of this card is Special Summon. You can send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard, then target a level four lower water in your graveyard and place it on either the top or the bottom of your deck. So as this first effect gets a little better, the second effect gets a little worse, right? We're putting stuff back in our deck at this point, but if you put something on top, you're giving yourself a potential right mill if you're going to be able to mill again or draw a card or whatever. Um, that could be decent, or just give yourself a follow-up play for the following turn. You never know, right? So um, this is pretty good. I like this. Or just loading. Well, I don't think that works. I don't know if you can take an extra deck monster and put it back in the extra deck in this instead of, of on top or bottom of the deck. I don't know, but this card definitely seems solid, and it's a tuner. They're really good as well. Next elite, we move to our boss-ish monster, our only extra deck monster so far, is Deep Sea Princess Prima Donna. This is a level 7 water sea serpent synchro. Tuner effect monsters this is a synchro tuner, which makes Christron Halki Fibrax possibly amazing in this deck. Also, he's water, so don't forget that. Its attack is 1500 and, and its defense is 2700, so you're probably not summoning this in attack. It is completely generic, takes any tuner plus uh, one or more non tuners, so very completely synchro generic. You can use this card first and third effects once per turn each. The first effect, you can target one of your opponent's banished cards. Take one level four lower water monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or special summon it. And if you do, add the target to your opponent's hand, um, which is nice because you're just making you're just making value off of your opponent's like thing, right? Like if you had already ripped an ash out of your opponent's hand, the ash wouldn't be added back until you already special summoned. So you would like get that special summon. It wouldn't be ashable, which is really nice. Um, and like yeah, they were gonna get that resource back anyway, most likely. So this is like not that big a deal. Second effect, a Synchro Monster that was Synchro Summoned using this card as material cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect. That is also very, very nice. This is a 7. And if you can tune up into a 9, well, most 9s are like 2,700 minimum. So you'll at least just have a 2,700 beater that can't be targeted, plus like whatever that monster actually does. That's pretty, pretty strong. <laughs> and imagine making something like even bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like a 10, 11, 12, any of those are going to be even bigger than that and untargetable, apparently. Um, this could just be a win condition by just making like a Towers-esque monster, right? Also, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target a Banished card, shuffle it into the deck. Now, this is even more spicy because if you if you um, banish two cards from your opponent's hand, you may give them back one, but you get to target which one, so you target which one is, is a little less valuable. Um, to them, give them that one, and then when you like synchro this card off to synchro up into something, you can just target the other one and shuffle it. So this is actually making them lose a resource. And if you used her, you got to look and choose that resource. So this could just be possible, like rip any one card out of your opponent's hand, which is actually we know is really really busted, especially paired with some other cards in the uh, you know water arsenal that we'll get to in a second. This card is very very strong. And the last card is also very, very important here. This is Deep Sea Aria, a normal spell card that you can only activate uh, cards with its name once per turn. All it says is banish a water monster from your graveyard. Then add a level 4 lower sea server monster from your deck to the, gra uh, to the hand. Um, like, <laughs> it's Rota. We've got another Rota. Um, it kind of goes along with the whole thing of, like, um, sign at mining. It's definitely not as good as Rota because it doesn't just add. You have to do a little setup by getting a water monster in grave. You have to banish that card in grave if it could have been a possible resource down the line to get a search. But nonetheless, it's a search and it's pretty easy to do. I mean, this is 2019. This will be 2020 when this card actually comes to us. It's not that hard to get a water monster in grave. And then you search like so, 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 so good. I'm really excited for this, and even outside of this deck, any deck that plays like Sea Serpents that are pretty good, this card immediately becomes like something you gotta think about. I'm really excited for this. Looking at some of the stuff like Deep Sea Deep, if you don't know what it does, when it's normal summon, you can special summon a level three or lower Sea Serpent straight from the deck. Uh, very, very strong, especially in this deck now. Um, you know, tutoring through all those little guys that we just looked at. She's also a level two tuner, so 
that kind of that totally come up. You have all the mermail stuff. They all do like individual things that just kind of tear about through your deck. Abystius and Abyss Mango, they send water monsters from hand to graver to activate their effects. Most of them do. So that works with our level two guy that when he's sent um, for a water monsters effect, um, banish a card, you know, banish a card from your opponent's hand, which is nice. Um, these guys as well, just banishing multiple just to get themselves on field and then recurring them. Or this guy recurs you like other mermails and stuff. Drag Moons is very, very powerful, especially with like either Deep Sea Diva. Oh no, Deep Sea Diva didn't work, but with a Neptibus specifically, um, which is so, so busted in my opinion. I think that, that comp that like is, you get so much like good resource development off that. Neptibus is just another really strong summon. For the um for the deck, I think we'll probably see Dragoons and Nethabus in the deck at this point. If we if like we didn't get anything else, I can see that. Um, also, Nethabus is completely searchable as well as Dragoons with our new Rota card. So is Diva. So now you're even though Diva's at one on the ban list, you have four copies of it. If you can get a Water Monster without using your normal summon uh, into Grave, you can just search her out, which is really really nice. And the last card I really want to highlight is Moonland Glacier because this card just rips two random cards out of your opponent's hand combine that with after you've done like her effect like when she's like leaves the field to target a banish card and shuffle it into the deck you potentially just ripped three cards out of your opponent's hand against most decks that's just going to be game like your board couldn't even be that good but he's a 2800 beater on the board you know if you linked her, if you synchroed up with her you probably have another like two beat sticks and your opponent has three cards Going second. That's if they didn't hand trap at all. They could have two or even one card in hand if they hand trapped it twice, right? And, and you're still able to end that. Like, this deck seems like it could potentially be a very, very nutso busted deck. We'll just have to wait and see where it goes. <laughs> That's going to do it for me, though, here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more news videos from me in the future. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll do it for your boy. Peace.